Howdy partners, I'm Cal. No time to lose! Welcome people, in this one we're going to be taking a look at Duck Station, emulation software to play PS1 games on, and this is the best PS1 emulator I've used, no doubt. Check the figures in the top right hand corner, this is running full speed in 1080p, and if you've got a more powerful computer, it can run in even better resolutions. It's really simple to set up, and I'm emulating this whilst capturing the footage at the same time on this retro gaming build that I'm working on. So if you want to know how to build a PC and get started in retro gaming, give me a like and subscribe to the channel and follow this series. I've been using this software quite a lot since I installed it, so let's have a look see how we can do it. Really, really easy. Here's the website from where you can download the software. I'll leave links in the description for these. But you've got a page here which shows all the system requirements and how to download and just the basics of it all and that links to the actual download so on here what we need for Windows 10 is this one here so we just click on here and it'll download it for us okay so we just close this window and what we're going to do I've set up a folder on my main drive called DuckStation and what I'm going to do is open the downloads folder and there it is, it's a zip file so what I'm going to do is just drag that across to this folder here and then just right click on here and using 7-zip extract here and there we are there's all the folders that we need I'm just going to put this back in the downloads folder so you notice on here there's quite a few executables here just ignore that for the time being what we need to do is set up a BIOS folder so I'll create new folder and name that BIOS and within this one we need to put the BIOS file for the PlayStation this is the BIOS file that we need. It's called scph1001.bin, and that's the BIOS file for the PlayStation 1. Just do a quick internet search for this, and you should find it with no problem. I'm right, going to back up, and what we need to do is create a folder here just to keep it nice and neat. I'm just going to put it all within this duck station, creating a games folder. Obviously, if you've got a hard drive with all your games on and everything you can just link to that in the software later on so this is the, the file system for it if you go into any of these you see it likes the bin and queue format it might be compatible with other ones but this is all that I've tried at the moment I might do future videos on this software because I find it really interesting and it's the best one that I've used so far and that, that is no lie there are some settings we need to go through and what I'm going to do is just pop out to my other computer for that and show you how I set it up on there. So here we are on the desktop for the retro gaming build then. So I'm just going to click on here and find where I've put Duck Station. There we are. So this is the one that we need to, to use. So I'm just going to double click on here. And what we need to do is set up where it needs to find the BIOS and also the games. So click on here for settings. Click on the BIOS settings. Make sure all these are down as auto detect. And now we need to point it in the direction of where the BIOS file is so just find it on your directory and then press select folder and there we are suggest you click this for fast boot because this skips the actual BIOS boot up sequence you don't really need that it speeds up the whole process and sometimes it does stutter I've noticed that on mine so if you just go to the general settings then you can copy these settings if you want but I don't think I'll really change much on here to be honest uh, the console setting, I didn't really change anything on here either I don't think except for I did change this preload image to RAM because I found sometimes when I put it on high settings it did stutter a little so I selected this um, it seemed to work better whether that me thinking it does or whether it does not 100% sure but it's not going to harm anything especially if you've got a lot of RAM it will speed things up but as you see in this box here when you click over or hover over different selections just tell you what it is in this box here so we've got emulation settings here didn't really change anything on here um, games list this is where you where you tell it where the games are so you click on here for add and then you find where your games are so in this one it's duck station and then we created a games folder and there they are and you press select folder Obviously I've already set this up but you just select yes and it'll scan them and then it'll pick up all your games and put them here for you. One thing you do need to do is go into the controller settings and set up your controller. So I've got a USB 
controller. It's exactly the same as a PS1 controller because I've got the PlayStation Classic. And it's really authentic to use with this software. So what you do is set up or select which one you want. I selected the analog controller and one by one just click on here press the corresponding button on your controller. If you make a mistake just click back on it and select the right one. Once you're done you don't need to press save anything if you don't want to. I did press save profile on here and you can see it here is down as a PS1 Mini. Onto the hotkey settings you can see here you can set up all different things for rewind, fast forward, toggle your turbo, that sort of thing. And the one thing I did notice on here um, you've got save states. So if you press F2, it will save the progress of the game where you actually are. And then if you make a mistake, you can always press F1 and then it will load from that point itself. Within the games, it does allow you to save states as well within the games. But once you get into it all, you can actually set up all these keys up yourself if you wanted to. So within the memory card setting, I didn't have to do anything on here. It's all set up already display settings I don't think I changed anything on here I might have selected this VSync here and I did select the hardware as Vulkan with your computer and your CPU you might want to find a different approach to this but Vulkan works best for me you might find OpenGL works for you this one was down as default but I did actually select the integrated graphics that's built into this Ryzen 5 2400G processor select these ones down here if you want to do your setup and you want to show your emulation speed and your frames per second and that sort of thing just so that you get it up and running at full speed and then you can take them back off once it's up and running the enhancement settings are brilliant I've got mine set up for 1080p as I said earlier and mine worked best on by linear you might want to select XBR but you're gonna to have to play with all these settings and get it running for your particular computer and your graphics card or your integrated graphics, whatever you've got. Multi sampling as well, it worked on 2X MSAA. I did have this higher, but it seemed to stutter in Hogs of War. So I've reduced this and it got rid of the problem completely. And all the rest of them here didn't really do anything at all, didn't mess with these at all. This is software that's going to be developed, I believe. So the best thing I could suggest you do is. On the downloads page there is a selection there to join a discord group if you're not sure about discord then i'm going to go on to that once i've progressed with the actual build of this retro gaming pc so don't forget to like and subscribe for that but once you're finished just click on any of the games that you want And then once you're ready you can select full screen you can actually select it to start from full screen within that menu and there we are get your controller start playing and believe me it doesn't really get much better than this for playstation 1 emulation the added bonus with this is you can increase the resolution so it looks better on newer hardware i.e monitors and tvs and things i've actually seen this running in 4k and that's the first time I saw this software, so I'll leave a link in the description for that if you want to check that video out. As I say, more build videos to come regarding this retro gaming computer and lots more emulation software as well. My name is Cal, have a good morning, afternoon or good evening, farewell till next time and I will see you later. Happy gaming people. Take that. Don't mess with the greens, everyone. They're on top form today. Hmm. I really can't be bothered with this.